Alleluia, Christ is risen. According to Robert Louis Wilkin, the author of a book called The Spirit of Early Christian Thought, Christianity began with the testimony of those who had known the risen Christ. Their witness, as Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians, was handed over to others. And in time, this handing over came to be called tradition. Christian faith is inescapably bound up with the lives and words of actual persons. For the truth of what was handed on rested finally on the faithfulness of those who did the handing on. So who did the handing on? Our story tonight from the Gospel of Luke tells us that it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary and the other women who did the first handing on who were the first witnesses to the empty tomb, the first to hear the message that Christ was not there, but was in fact risen. And Mary and Joanna and Mary and the other women went and became the first witnesses. They told this to the apostles. Eleven apostles at that time and a 10% retention rate, only Peter, was interested in their story. But Peter was interested enough to run right to the tomb and to see for himself. Their witness spurred in him the desire to know the truth. And Peter himself became one of the witnesses to whom we are indebted in our part of the Christian tradition. Peter became the first bishop of Rome and the Roman church eventually led down the Catholic tradition to our church. So we are in the line of those witnesses who have handed on what they saw for themselves, who have handed on the story and spurred an interest in others to see for themselves, to come to know Christ as alive and present. Remember how he told you, the angels say, he's alive, he's present with you. I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, says Paul. Christ is alive and present. We have just renewed our own baptismal vows very much in the way that the earliest catechumens, those who were preparing for baptism, would have done. When we renew our baptismal vows in a series of questions from Father Ralph, do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We're doing what Christians have done from the very beginning. We are taking what we have learned from the bishop or from our priest, and we are handing back, if you will, what has been handed on to us as we hand back the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit. We are taking what was handed on to us and handing it back as we renew our baptismal vows. After the innumerable vigil readings at an early Easter Vigil, we only had four, which was not so bad. After innumerable vigil readings, the earliest catechumens would then have been taken to the baptismal pool, and they would have gone down into the pool and been immersed in the water three times, dunked in the water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized dying with Christ under the water and rising again out of the water. I showed my Education for Ministry group a few weeks ago a picture of a baptistry from Italy where the ceiling over the baptismal pool was beautifully decorated with a mosaic of Christ and the apostles. The only person who could see it 
was the person being baptized on their back, coming up out of the water. They would see themselves entering new life in Christ. After they were baptized, those first catechumens would be anointed with oil, dressed in a white robe, and brought back into the church to receive communion for the very first time. Before their baptism, they would not have stayed in the church. They would have no idea what communion was. And as they received the bread and the wine of the Eucharist for the very first time, they were also given milk and honey, a foretaste of paradise for that first Eucharist. And during the whole rest of Easter week, they kept coming to church in their white garments, enjoying and lingering in that new life. Now, Robert Wilkin, the author I referred to a moment ago, he goes on to say that before there were treatises on the Trinity, or before there were learned commentaries on the Bible, or before there were disputes about the teaching of grace or essays on the moral life, there was awe and adoration before the exalted Son of God, alive and present in the Eucharist. Alive and present in the church's offering of communion. The newly baptized become witnesses themselves receiving what the bishop had handed on to them and handing it over themselves, becoming witnesses themselves of this new life in Christ, testifying themselves to Christ alive and present with them too. One of my very favorite prayers comes from morning prayer in our prayer book. And it encapsulates for me what this Holy Week is about. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Our mission, our baptismal vow, is to bring others to know and love Christ as we do, to know him alive and present for them too. St. Augustine said that that knowledge of God sinks into the mind and the heart slowly and it requires apprenticeship. That's why we must become, he said, servants of wise persons. That is to say, we don't start with truth or falsity of certain teachings. We start with people whose lives are formed by the teachings of Christ and of the church. Starting with Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary and Peter and on to Paul and his companions, down through unnamed bishops over the centuries teaching the rule of faith and baptizing, through Augustine and other church fathers, down through Thomas Cranmer in our own Anglican tradition, all the way down the centuries to our present day, we have had handed over to us the testimony of Christ's witnesses. We too, have come to believe and to love and to know Christ. And as we apprentice ourselves to the wise persons of the church, renewing our baptismal vows, handing back the creed and being formed constantly by its teaching, we become witnesses ourselves to the risen Christ, alive and present, alive now and present with us. Alleluia, Christ is risen.